Mario. I know that guy. <laughs> Unlike other characters, Mario was successful. He beat arcades, the Z-axis, and even smartphones, and withstood technology or cultural innovation as the face of video games. There's a lot of things I just said. I think that Nintendo not adapting Mario to mature audiences and staying on the straight and narrow says a lot about the company. Sure, we all have our Wii U era, but we all eventually get to our Odyssey. And even Super Mario Bros. sure was a hit, but not fumbling the bag after that was not luck, but strategy. But it wasn't as if Mario's design was meticulously crafted in 1983 and they said, this guy's gonna be eating watermelon chocolates. <laughs> However, Mario's actually a crazy cool lesson in iteration of a character's design without contradicting its core values or alienating its audience. Alienating its audience. <laughs> so today we're going to go all the way from ew to the essence of mortality. Sounds like a regular Thursday. So, uh, grab onto your brown nose hairs because we're going to the 80s! There was a lot of crack cocaine, and Nintendo was tired of Hanafuda and Ultra Hands, and they wanted to try something new. Introducing the video game market. They actually dabbled in this for quite a while with Game & Watches and other unique trinkets. It was around this time the video game crash in 1983 happened, as you all know, everyone's repeated it up until this point, so that was the creation of Donkey Kong. It at least makes me feel a little comfortable knowing that he was always blue and red. Mario didn't come from the idea that they wanted this Italian plumber platforming. Rather, it was a lot of inspiration and limitations. First, Miyamoto wanted to use characters from Popeye. No, not the chicken Gen Zetters, the guy that ate spinach, which apparently is in now. Regardless of how in spinach is, they weren't allowed to use the Popeye trio, but Miyamoto got the idea to use a trio similar to that. I don't know if I trust the guy that made Pikmin, though. Then, the name of Mario actually came from the owner of Nintendo of America's warehouse, Mario Segal, who was actually a construction worker. Then, the reason Mario has a mustache and a hat is because with so few bits, it's easier to communicate a colored mustache and hat than sophisticated hair and a mouth. The most interesting part of Mario's evolution was right at the start. They had no idea what the yeah. f they were doing. Early Mario designs looked like... The pizza man. There was some stuff on the cutting room floor as well, such as this one sprite where Mario's crossing his arms from Donkey Kong. Imagine this being the kickoff of Mario being way past cool. He would have simultaneously killed Sonic and himself. And being box art from the 80s. I'm okay with this. From there, we'd evolve into the Mario Bros. Mario where we'd first meet Luigi. And Mario would adopt the plumbing moniker. <laughs> Like, what's that face? What are your intentions? Why the plunger? Wait a bit longer, and we would get... The original side-scrolling action platform game! <laughs> Anyways, between all of these Mario sprites, there are some subtle variations. Mainly the problem now was the Super Mushroom existing, and Mario could be this, and this. His Tinder profile must be wild. But the sprites don't change very significantly, although the Donkey Kongs had eyes that seemed really unimpressed with everything. Also putting the yuck, in color scheme, yeesh. Thankfully, Mario was always sort of red and blue from the start, but the variations just don't stay consistent. Donkey Kong, red overalls, blue shirt, red hat. Mario Bros, blue hat, blue overalls, and a red shirt. Super Mario Bros, ew. The game was so good they made his color palette throw up and nobody cared. You can see it took a while to get his shit together color-wise, but I think people were just happy with such a good game coming out, whether his hair was green or not. Why? God, the DOS players must have had a lot of questions. Something not so commonly known as Mario's first appearance wasn't a very consistent sprite. This was the age of arcade games that didn't really have very strong copyright laws, so... And some days you just feel like that Amstrad sprite. This is only sprite-wise, though. If we want to pinpoint when Mario started being a little more consistent, we can look at the Japanese box art of Super Mario Bros. This was the first very, very, very little step towards our modern Mario. Here we have the proportions and the first instance of the M on his hat. And this is really the first appearance for a lot of these characters. Obviously. Why am I this turtle? From here, they chisel away at what we know today as the arcade era of Mario. It didn't help the confusion that Mario's now Nintendo's mascot, and he'd appear in a bunch of other games in many, many different forms. Yeah. I feel like we're missing a few things. Oh no! Doki Doki Panic was Mario too. <laughs> Box art wise, it really didn't tell us anything new about Mario that this older one didn't. Except this one has a turn up! But, what's that? Do my eyes deceive me? 
a game that was a port of another game had the first official Mario sprite, which was in the color palette that- Why am I so obsessed with the colors red and blue? These are two primary co Oh my god. So when I want to make myself feel better about my inconsistent YouTube channel, I just remember that Mario's overalls were not the same for five years. As an Italian, why did you make him a construction worker? What was the underlying stereotype there? Back in the 90s, I was in a very famous game. Finally! we can look towards the next decade, finally settling on Mario's design. The first time this actually happened was in Super Mario Bros. 3. On the cover, because in the game he was wearing these black overalls, and that was the reason I didn't finish the game. But it did give us a 2D style of Mario that would remain consistent up until today. This will lead into Super Mario Land 2 with Mario's design retaining the Super Mario 3 style, but Mario's in piss world. But when? When did they finally get it I love this video game for a lot of reasons. While this wasn't the first instance of Mario having certain traits, it was what brought them all together and gave Mario a consistent style. From the font, the sprites, the enemies, and Mario's design. Oh man, this game was perfect. It'd be a shame if some last letter of the alphabet came to ruin the- Mario was coming at you in a third dimension. If you weren't sure how chubby his cheeks were, you could just take him. Right off. Ah. This was basically the same staple design, proportions, color coding, boom, but in 3D. Now it's not really different per se, they weren't trying to change anything, but when you're adapting something into a new dimension, of course you're gonna have to try a few times. And the first game to have a 3D Mario model in... Can you not? And the first game to have a 3D Mario... Can you, can you not? The first 3D Mario to appear in a game was Super Mario 64. This was iconic for sure, but there's just something I don't like about him. A bit pale, and those eyes look like they're telling secrets to each other. Naturally, being the first 3D Mario model running around as he did, it was impressive. Just, its polygonal shape and textures took away from Mario's chubby and expressive nature, which in most games defined him. I don't think I've given such a good reason for why I hate someone, but I mean... Anyone standing like this is either really picking a fight or having a battle of their own waiting for the bathroom stall. Don't worry, Mario, you'll get your shit together in Mario Kart, Mario Party, Mario Tennis, and Mario Golf! I don't know what the hell happened with Smash though. Did you get sat on? Did you like it? The reason a lot of earlier 3D Mario models looked the way they did is one, the fidelity of rendering software for both renders and models was not as advanced. Two, these characters prior to 3D were limited to an equal sided this thing. In a lot of earlier home consoles, you had bits dictating how many graphics could appear on screen. A lot of the time, if you wanted to design a platforming game so you could see all the details on screen, you typically made your character fit within a square. Hence why a lot of action games made their characters chibi. So naturally, after this point, Mario was getting a little more poignant. This one looks like he's upset that he got the girl's Happy Meal toy. Mario has legs now, ladies and gentlemen. Well, yeah, while Sunshine's model wasn't much taller, it actually could be Mario without a mushroom, it's clear that they made Mario's head smaller and tried to make his proportions more realistic. Throw on a villa cartelet, marinate the pesto penne molto penne. It's a Mario, and you know that. Don't need to think about it. Boom, that's Mario. After this, boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh yeah, if you're wondering why they set the oven to broil on Melee Mario, uh... That. GameCube era and Wii era had basically the same renders and in-game models. While a lot of Mario games started looking the same at this time, we have a host of side series of Mario that branched out in this era. Paper Mario stuck with its roots and stayed stubby, while the other Mario RPGs actually exaggerated the characters to make them more personable. Luigi at this point started looking like a beanpole and had floods, which reminds me of my elementary school career. Each of these iterations evolved in their own art style and are a treat to go through. Oh, speaking of which, we haven't talked about... Okay. People who grew up with Brawl. This doesn't look so bad in the context of Brawl with all those Brawl characters. Alright, but pluck this Mario render out and put it next to all the other Mario renders. It is disgusting! Did he need to be manspreading? And of course, the last subseries is Strikers. Let me have this one. Still using the same model, but they made Mario angry! The media blamed rising crime rates on this. But from here on out, not much really changed. In the past, it was the mainline platforming Mario games that started to change things up, but even now, Galaxy looked the same and so did New Soup. Although, and I might be overanalyzing this, I think early 2000s Mario kind of looks weird. It's hard to put my finger on, and I definitely wouldn't put my finger on that, but it feels like the colors are more dull, and Mario's expressions and body language are soulless. I don't know why this one hurts me so much. Okay, so was there a point where they said, hey, we can do better? Hey, 
try to get a- Ten years later, what is this, the government? Ah, I gotta be careful, I can't be making political commentaries in my video- <laughs> I think when I compare this one to this one, you can sort of see what I'm saying better. I'm not saying any of these are horrible or anything, but that little tweak does so much. And that really is showcased in a lot of 3D World's promotional art. And that continued out into Mario Kart 8. In a lot of the renders, he's got such a wider range of facial expressions that we really hadn't seen since Mario Kart 64. Not to mention the lovely 2D animations in this game in the Mario 3 style. Probably one of my favorite additions. Rosalina, you got something to say? But my favorite Mario renders of all time happen to be by Sega. Yes, I am salty that the Mario and Sonic crossover series has as much to do with them as it does with shot put. Yeah. You can definitely tell whoever did this did a lot of Sonic characters because Mario's posing and expressions are so sharp. Ubisoft's really aren't bad either. Oh hey, what time is it? That's right, the Nintendo Switch exists, and boy does everyone know it. But what's a Nintendo console without- ah! Oh, you startled me, Mario. What with the mortality written all over your face? Mario is expressive, like, duh, but they finally did it in a real game, like, hashtag, what? I feel like this could be the next wave of Mario evolutions. If they were consistent, because there's a lot of Nintendo promotional videos where Mario goes back to the old style, and he's actually very expressive, and they're very pretty videos, but why make this Odyssey one if you weren't going to continue it? You can say whatever you want about Odyssey, but they nailed Mario. So here we are, a full history of Mario's redesigns. It's definitely not as radical as Sonic, and I definitely don't have a problem with Mom, I can't pause, it's an online game versions of Mario compared to this one, but as I said, the small tweaks made a huge difference in communicating what Mario was all about. And I'm just happy that they stuck with it. Having a brand and character be recognizable and appealing to different generations is huge. And there's no signs of stopping for Mario or any franchise of Nintendo, so... Uh, maybe I'll hit you back up in 20 years for another Mario Redesigns video. Who gave the okay to make you take his socks off?! And I'm gonna make a good cat. I know you want it. I know you want it. I know you want it. You're a good cat. Can't let me have it. Want to get nasty? All those are classy and in blurred lines. I know you want it. I know you want it. I know you want it. You're a good cat. Let, let me get handy. Want to get it nasty? Okay, bye. See ya. Thanks for watching.